Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Richwood Presbyterian Church. We are so glad for those who brave the weather to be here and to join us. And we thank you for that. It is uh, snowy and icy out there and um, not good travel. So I am proud of those who also stayed home to protect themselves in safety. Two announcements today. Um, I want to remind everyone about Super Bowl Sunday, spelled S-O-U-P-E-R. We would like you to drop off cans of soup at the church as we send those to needy people. Also, I need recorded voices for our musical. So if you are willing to record your voice as an angry person in a crowd, we ask that you contact me. This will be on February 14th, and it will be a very small musical because of social distancing, but um, we will be doing that on February 14th. And with those two announcements, let us now turn our hearts and our thoughts to the Lord our God as we worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. reading as printed in your bulletin. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass, they flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. Keep 
trusting that God will forgive us. Our comfortable lives convince us we do not need to follow Jesus, steadfast God. Our work provides for our wants, so we have no need for your grace. Our friends are found through social media, so we do not need your community. Our fear of the beliefs and cultures of others makes us sure that we do not need to share your grace with them. Forgive us for dragging our feet as Jesus' disciples, compassionate God. May we get up from our comfort zones and step out in faith. May we go to all the uncomfortable places to bring hope. May we proclaim with our lips, but especially with our lives, that the kingdom of love is near, brought by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We will now have two minutes of silence, and you may lift up to the Lord whatever you want, but if you're searching, ask him what comfort zone he would like you to leave and how to go forward in faith.
thou might do work. saying, 
Now the Lord has given us room and we will flourish in the land. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
The epistle lesson for this morning is taken from the 18th chapter of Matthew, verses 21 through 35. Here Matthew recounts the parable of the unmerciful servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson for the day is taken from James chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by their good life, by the deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Hearing the reading of God's Word. Last week, we started a three-part series on those things which stall our spiritual transformation. As Christians, we should be in a constant and continual state of growth. In Romans, Paul tells us that God has predestined us to be conformed to the image of of his son. So even non-Presbyterians have to admit that we are still predestined in at least one area, which is to be like Jesus Christ. But all too often, we start to slip back into our old habits and way of life. But all of this can be prevented. We can forestall the stall. Last week we talked about becoming so busy we have no time for spiritual exercise. 
That is, reading God's word, prayer, sharing our, the gospel, and service to others. One of our community shared with me this week the words of Henry Nowen that fit this situation so well. Spiritual reading is not only reading about spiritual people or spiritual things. It is also reading spiritually. That is, in a spiritual way. Reading in a spiritual way is reading with a desire to let God come closer to us. The purpose of spiritual reading is not to master knowledge or information, but to let God's Spirit master us. Strange as it may sound, spiritual reading means let God be read, let ourselves be read by God. Spiritual reading is reading with an inner attentiveness to the movement of God's Spirit in our outer and inner lives. With that attentiveness, we will allow God to read us and to explain to us what we are truly about. This week, the focus is on the strife and conflict in our lives. In our silent meditation quoted from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he mentions this as one of the possible causes of spiritual immaturity. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? James mentions it as envy and selfish ambition. He calls it earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Yet there is hardly a day in our lives where we do not encounter selfishness in some form or other. How can we forestall the stall of our spiritual growth when there are so many people who can rise us up to anger? There are two ways to rise above envy and strife. One is forgiveness of others. And two, godly wisdom. In our gospel reading today, Peter asked Jesus how many times he was to forgive his brother or sister who sinned against him. We aren't really sure Jesus' answer because of the original Greek. It is either 77 times or it's 490 times, that is 70 times 7. But the noted answer contains what is considered to be the perfect number by Hebrews 7. In other words, you are to forgive perfectly. Then Jesus goes on to tell a parable about the comparison of debt. The message in the parable is to remind us of how much God has forgiven us. And then in the same way, we are to forgive others. In Matthew 6, Jesus teaches what we now call the Lord's Prayer. This prayer includes the phrase, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. In Tom Long's play about the young lady praying the Lord's Prayer and God actually answers her, God reminds her about a friend that she has not forgiven. She responds that Kathy continues to treat her unkindly and that Kathy is not one bit sorry. And God simply states, Okay, I will forgive you only the sins you bother to confess and then only if you never repeat them. As we forgive, 
he will forgive. Jesus immediately continues after his conclusion to the Lord's Prayer with the words, For if you forgive others when they sin against you, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Perhaps forgiveness is something, as God's people, where we all need a lot of work. In addition to forgiveness, we need to practice God's wisdom. James said, the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial, and sincere. Let's not skip over these very lightly. First of all, pure. The definition of pure is something that is not mixed with any other elements, that is not contaminated in any way, or a person who has no sins and is totally wholesome. An example of pure is what has not been mixed with anything else, such as a nun who has separated herself and is moral and virtuous. And who decides what's moral for the children of God? I think that answer is obvious. We must not be contaminated in any way by this world. Secondly, peace loving. As James continues in the very next verse, peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. If we are not striving for peace at all times, then we cannot be peace-loving. Our Old Testament lesson was a story of how Isaac's servants had dug a well, and others laid claim to it. So they move on and dig a second well. Again, they pour, they, someone take claim, lays claim to it. So they dig a third well. They moved on. What would be our typical immediate response? Would not our first response be to defend our rights to the first well? After all, we dug it, and we could provide witnesses that show that we dug the well. Would we not dig in our feet into the dirt and hold our ground? Next, James writes, consider it. Marian Webster writes, one who is considered is thoughtful of the rights and feelings of others. In order to be considerate, we must be able to listen well. When someone is speaking, our typical response is to be thinking of how we want to answer that person instead of focusing on what they are saying and trying to comprehend their thoughts and feelings. The minute we start to turn our thoughts to what we want to say, we have become inconsiderate. Next, submissive. That word is loaded. A search of the internet brings up a myriad of answers and explanations. Most sites speak of authority and dominant persons. But Paul wrote in Ephesians, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. If one is an authority or a dominant person, How can we possibly submit to each other? This is one where Christians will need to leave the worldly wisdom and follow the Spirit's leading. We could continue the discussion along this vein, full of mercy, never giving people what they deserve, good fruit, 
as produced by the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Impartial. Galatians 3, 28 reads, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, our modern-day race discrimination, neither slave nor free, our modern-day class discrimination, and neither male nor female, our modern-day sex discrimination. And lastly, he said, sincere. Mean what you say, and say what you mean. If we lived every moment in godly wisdom, I won't repeat the list. You can look it up in James chapter 3 to remind yourselves. And forgave others the way we want God to forgive us. There would be no jealousy, no quarreling, no strife, no envy. As it is, these things exist and only stunt our spiritual growth. May God forgive us for those times that we do not live in the image of his Son. Let's pray. Lord God, we have confessed those things that were written on the paper. We have met with you quiet for two minutes. But there is so much because we are all so very far from the image of your Son. Continue to grow us in that direction. Remind us of the godly wisdom. Bring to mind those people we need to forgive so that we can live in the light of your love and become more like Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen.
It's a longer creed. Um, we don't do it very often, but it's the oldest creed we have on record for the Christian church from 300 AD. And so let us now join together with the Christians over 1,700 years. We believe in God and God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Those of you who um, get mailed out via email, the bulletin, you will have a list of the in-house prayers. Um, you will notice that John bolded this week Four of the bolded names, we always bold new additions, are part of our church community. Two of which are in the hospital, one of which has um, been to the hospital twice during the week. So well, let us truly remember these as we look through our own community who is now suffering. As you can see, Annie is not here and back yet. We hope she will be with us next Sunday. And um, it, she is on the road to recovery. So, And she is on the list. So continue to lift her up in prayer as well. Let's go to the Lord our God. Father, we trust you. You have promised us that there is no government in power that is not there without your permission. So even if we are glorious over this week or if we are saddened, we trust you. And we trust that you know what you are doing with this country. We ask, Father, that you will give our leaders nationwide, statewide, countywide, and locally wisdom so that they might do what you would have them to do. We lift them into your care. We lift our country into your care. Lord, we lift up to those in our own congregation who need your prayer and their families that surround them who are also concerned. Father, we ask for your healing touch in these situations. That you enter the hospital room and touch their body or that you enter their home. That you give comfort to those who are around them and give them wisdom for care and the right words to say. We also do not want to forget the rest of those who are on our list, Father. 
They are concerned of those of our congregation, and they care about those people. And because they care, you care. We thank you for that, and we ask that your presence be in those situations as well. As we pray together the prayer, our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing in closing how deep the Father's love for us. Bye.
Now, oh, stand up. And now, go. Forgiving all those in your life who need to for you, you need to forgive so that God's love can flow through you. Seek out godly wisdom. May the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the intimate fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the extravagant love of God the Father be with each and every one of you.